I'm just going to get started now. So I'm Peter Irby, I'm the CTO of Greenlight and Hydra, and I'm going to talk about the true cost of paid search. So in order to help me a little bit, how many people in the audience are paid search practitioners? Oh, that's a good deal. How many of you are natural search SEO practitioners? Good. Perfect. You should get along just fine after this, not before. So when I go and look at how people do integrated search today, I basically see a picture very much like that. You got your SEO team, you got your PPC team, you got your social team, and they all sit and look at their own little part of the world. Nobody actually looks at the bigger overall picture. And that's just the way it is, but it's not the way it should be. Because the idea of integrated search is actually that you look at each other once and you try and find out what you can do across these different channels. And I talk about SEO, PPC, and social, social as different channels. Think about it as that. So the question I'm going to pose myself is, what would you need to do if you wanted to truly do things across multiple channels? That we have a problem today is fairly obvious. I'll just show you some data that we have collected. We believe that up to a fifth of every pound that is spent on your paid search budget is being spent on terms you're already ranking for naturally. Does that match what you think? Are you the companies that that magically have solved this problem. I think everywhere I go, this is the case. And in particular, for a lot of those unscrupulous agencies, they would do this. And I will tell you in a second why they do it and why this number is probably much bigger for some accounts than for others. So that's the really the point of the talk today. Why is a fifth of all the money spent on terms, on PVC spent used on terms we already rank for naturally? First, let me just explain what the problem is. If you look at a company, what you're trying to do, yeah, this is what the SEO team sees. This is the part of the page they see. They see the extensions, what they can do. This is their view of the world, and they don't really care about anything else. The PBC team, this is what they see. Problem is, what does the visitor to the site see? They actually see part of the information. They see. PPC information, SEO information, and social information. What can a visitor do when they go to a site? They can actually choose any of those three, right? Do you all agree? Do you do it? Have you got any preferences? You probably have. Interesting point is, you don't click on all of them at the same time. So we actually have two teams, or three teams in this case, that are working on actually addressing what the user wants to see. They only look at the whole part of the world, but they all interact. And there's nobody who thinks about that interaction and what it actually means. And what I'm going to talk about in this presentation is that interaction and what it actually means. Okay. Do you know how you can figure out this, what the impact of this, in, uh, of this interaction is? How would you go about measuring it? Well, we did for a retail bank, or that did business banking, we did an experiment. What we did was, through a whole set of keywords related to brand, we switched them off for seven days, we switched them on for seven days, and as things were roughly the same across these two weeks, you can actually compare this week here with this week there. Do you all understand what we're doing? Like for like test. Let's look at a bit of the results. Total application, which is what we are measuring here, application for accounts, 668 when the PVC band is on, coming via my paid search channel. 33, uh, no, 668 via my organic search channel, 33 through my paid. Total of 701. Not bad. Total applications without PPC, 699. Difference between the two is the number of incremental applications that are being provided by PPC 
i.e., the number of applications I would have had had the PPC advert not been there. So it's a measly two applications. Different way of putting it. You are actually lost 31 SEO applications that you would have had had you not had the PPC advert on that part for those keywords. 31 applications. Now, that's a lot. It's interesting. It shows that there is a definite effect. There is a definite trade-off as to what people are going to click on on the page. It means you might be able to remove it. But that's not the point here. The point is much, much more profound, and I'm going to show that to you now. How do we cost, or how do we actually go about finding out what our cost per acquisition is? Do you know that? Every PPC team? Is this the way you do it? Total cost, 706.3 pounds. How many acquisitions do I have? 33. What is my cost per acquisition? 2140. Well, it's expensive, but it's a bank, so they can probably afford it, right? There's a problem here. Have you spotted it? Let me show you. How many lost SEO applications did we have? 31. So instead of calculating this, which is the cost per acquisition, if we actually looked at the cost per incremental acquisition above what we would have had had we not had the paid search one, it's actually 33 minus 31, which is 2. So the cost per incremental acquisition is actually 353 pounds and 15 p. You're talking orders of magnitude bigger. Now, if you're running your PPC campaign, which of those two numbers should you be using? Yeah? Obviously, this. What are you using? Is there anybody here who is using that number today to judge the performance of their search paid campaign or paid search campaigns? Anybody? No. But you should be doing it because I've just shown you there is an interaction between paid and natural search. And I've shown you the exact magnitude of that effect. And I've shown you here what the cost of it is. You cannot afford to ignore that because you're spending a fifth of your total budget on this. Think about it. Huge money. What I've done is even more obvious if you just go and look a little bit at the maths of it behind it. You have to apologize. I'm a scientist, but I've tried to make it really simple. This is the way we calculate the cost per acquisition, the cost of a PVC campaign divided by the PVC applications. Is there any mention in there of our SEO cost? No. What I want you to do is to look at this number, the cost of the PPC campaign taking the PVC application and subtracting from that the lost SEO applications, the SEO applications you missed out on because you put a paid search listing on your page. That's the key number you're going to use. Make sense, right? You can see now I'm taking account of the fact that the two things are interacting. It's even better than that. You can actually go and calculate the efficiency of by which you're doing things. So what I've done here is I take my 33. Here I have the number of what I lost. And these are the total number of SEO, uh, PPC clicks I got. So here I actually have the number, the incremental number of clicks divided by the total number of clicks, which give me the efficiency of the clicks I'm getting from my PPC channel. This particular case is very low, 6%. And what you can then see now is that you can actually take this number here, which is your traditional cost per acquisition, and if you use this efficiency number and divide it in here, you'll actually get the proper cost. So the key to it is this efficiency number is actually the way you can go and measure how you're trading off between your PPC spent and your existing SEO uh, applications. That's the key to all of it. And you can take it one step further. You can actually use the efficiency number you just saw. I've done it here on a revenue basis rather than an application basis to modify your traditional calculation 
of return on advertising spent. So instead of seeing the, the number of the additional revenue you generate for each pound of advertising you spent on PPC, what I'm doing here is I'm actually adjusting that with the efficiency of my campaign, taking account of all the clicks I'm losing from my natural search channel. This is a proper measure, and that's the way everybody should be measuring their campaign. If they're looking at it from multiple perspectives, this is absolutely essential. Well, nobody is kind of com uh, complaining about this. Nobody seems to take object to it. Let me just tell you something interesting about this. This is not exactly new. What I just showed you is 100 years old. Yeah, Friedrich Freiherr von Visa actually wrote a paper in 1940 that had a term in it called opportunity cost. And what I was calculating and I was showing you was the opportunity cost in terms of lost SEO clicks. That's everything I've done. So for nearly a hundred years, we have known that that's the way we should be measuring this. Why have we not done it? Do you know? It is incredibly difficult to do. And you say, you just showed us the experiment. It was very easy. You showed us the result. Actually, the data in that, in that experiment, to get to that data, is incredibly difficult because of a couple of things, which I was just going to mention. One of them is, how do you get statistical significance when you're comparing two weeks, one week by one week? It is very difficult. Things change, right? Do you ever see exactly the same behavior from one week to another? No. You can be close to it, but not necessarily be exactly the same. If you're a retailer, you know at the end of the month, yeah, you're not going to have as many clicks until people get paid. Yeah, so you actually see a decline through the months. All of these things have to be taken into account if you're going to do this as an experiment. It is very difficult to do, right? Second point. If you concentrate on revenue figures alone, it's actually very difficult to do because revenue varies enormously across a product set. If you just have one thing, it's easy. If you only have one product, but if you have a large variety of products, the average order value is going to change massively across your product portfolio. And this gets actually very difficult to do as well. So you need to be very clever about how you handle that. Again, it's all about statistics. Second issue is attribution tracking. You have to be able to, or you have to be able to track what you actually have. And you'll be surprised. Most analytic solutions that I looked at is never set up to tracking this properly. It isn't. What kind of attribution do you use? How many here uses first click attribution? You see, how many? There's one. Thanks for actually do it. How many people here use Google Analytics? Okay, what's the default attribution in Google Analytics? First click, yay, thank you. Last click attribution, how many uses that? The point I'm making here is if you're using first click attribution, you can't even evaluate your experiment to start with. It's not possible. Let me make it worse for you. You all know that Google is very security conscious and they're so security conscious that they actually want to encode all SEO keywords so you don't know what they are, right? A large percentage of the SEO traffic that comes to a site today, for, the, for that traffic, you simply do not know what the keyword is. However, if you're going to do this, you need to be able to attribute that, and you need to be very, very smart about how the landing pages you land on and actually the keywords that are targeted on those pages. It is very, very difficult to do, but it can be done. And that's exactly what I did in my experiment. The point here is, key point to take away is, to run these experiments for a large amount of keywords by hand is not going to be possible. I have to disappoint you. Can't be done. Does that mean what I said is not valid? No. It just means you have to find an automated way of doing it. And that's exactly what we do. In our hydro, with our hydro technology, we are basically taking search results, information from PPC tools, and we are actually combining all of this together inside our system together with the site analytics, i.e. your analytics solution, 
taking all of that in and we can actually transform it into a proper calculation of efficiency, which is exactly what you saw beforehand. So we can do that across your whole keyword set. We scan your site, we take the data from all of these sources, we combine it together, and we can provide an efficiency score for every single keyword on your site. And do you know what is really good about that? We can even let you see how this works from a 20,000 foot perspective. Look at this. UK leading retailer, the box is here. The box is here is their search volumes. The color you see here is the efficiency. Green means 100% efficiency, i.e. it's most likely you don't rank naturally at all. It's only paid. And red means really poor efficiency. This retailer can look in and they can actually see, am I doing well or not? Well, what can we see from this? Is there anything that is green? I think there's some small lumps here. If the color were a little bit better, you would see them. But there's a lot of red ones. Can you see this? Lingerie. I'm really interested in lingerie, especially around Valentine's Day. You'll be surprised the amount of search days. This is all red and, yet and orange. It basically means we have very good natural rankings. And there is a very large interaction between the paid adverts we put in that sector and everything else. This is the whole point of it. We actually want to show you where you can gain efficiencies in terms of what you do with your campaigns. That's everything it's about. Good. As I said, it's part of our Hydro solution. I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail about it. If you want to, I can talk to you about it afterwards. But I'll just say that what we're trying to do in Hydra is to take paid search information Earned, which is your natural search, related to a natural search and the present content you got on your site, and the earned one, which is the link and the external social view of your site. We basically want to take all of these pieces of information and put them together in a consistent form. And what you see here is this intersection here, right? Between paid and natural search. So I've shown you one third of what we can do in our tool. But it's probably one of the most interesting ones because it's the easiest way of going and realizing some serious savings in the way you run your PPC campaigns.